Welcome back to another Lua tutorial and in this one we'll take a deeper look into if statements and logical expressions and then see how we can evaluate our code or variables or values to see if certain things hold true or not and then execute according code properly. So before we get into that I just want to tell you which tools we have to kind of compose lo logical expressions with. So let's just take uh, the, the first tree that we learned in the very first video and or and not and that just to give you a quick recap. They, they are all operators that have two operands, so in the case of AND, if A and B, so if they are both true, then the result is true, otherwise result is false. So that means that if A or B are false, or if both of them are false, the result of this operation is false. In other words, if the AND operation is only true when both A and B are true. And then the OR operand is very similar, it just works in the other direction. If both are false, the result is false, otherwise the result is true. So that means that if A or B, so that means either OR, are true, the result is true. And if both are true, of course, then it's also true. And the only case where OR, the result of an OR operation is false, is when both are false. And then also we have the NOT operation, which is just an, an opposite, so if A is true, the result is false and if a is false the, the result is true and i know this sounds very confusing at start because uh, you're not quite sure how this translates into actual code that is useful but i'll just give you a few more tools that we can use to then compose these statements together so other tools we also have at our disposal are less than sign greater than sign, less than or equal sign, greater than or equal sign, equal sign, and then not equal sign. And they're very self-explanatory, I guess, but I'll go over them just in case. So the less than sign, if the number on the left, so if 4 is smaller than 5, then the result of this operation is true. And of course, if it's bigger or it's the same, the operation is false. And the greater than sign is exactly the same, just in the opposite direction. The less than or equal or greater than or equal signs work the same as less than signs, but the only difference is if the numbers are actually the same, the result of this operation is true. So in th the same goes for greater than or equal signs. And of course then we have the equal signs, which just means if both values are exactly the same, the result is true, or if they're not, the result is false. This also works with strings or any other values that might think of. Well, of course, these, the, the four of comparisons if a number is greater or not, this does not work with strings. And then we have the not equal sign, which indicates if numbers are not, not the same or values are not the same, and if they are not the same then the result is true, and of course if they are the same the result is false. And now we can use the first three operands that we used with a combination of these to kind of see if certain things fall into a certain threshold. Let's say that we have a, a password just as an example, that has two values that are possible. So let's say that, you know, we have a key log that's a bit odd and we have two combinations and you have the combination one, two, three. And maybe another person has a combination of uh, two, four, five, whatever, doesn't really matter. And this combination is, so the, the combination opens if any of these two passwords are entered. So what you could do, right, if your password so this is just some variable is, uh, let's say, one, two, four, whatever, it doesn't really matter. And if this password is equal to one, two, three, because this is one possible password that one person has, or the password is equal to two, four, five, then the combination opens. So this is, this is not actual code, of course. Uh, I'll, I'll show you how we can use that with if statements later on, but I just want to showcase the OR operand. So in this case, of course, it's useful because the, the password has either either has to be 1, to 3, or it has to be 2, for 5 for the lock to open. And in this case, we can combine these statements to kind of create an ultimate logical statement. And how we can evaluate that by hand, you know? First of all, we will check the left side of this operation. And let's, in, in this case, of course, because our actual password that we entered is one to four, this would be false. And then we will check the right side and this would be false. And because both are false, then our lock would not open. But of course, if our password was something like one, two, three, we will check the left side, this would equate to true. 
and then we would check the right side and this would equate to false and because this is true and because the or operation works if any of them are true or both of them are true the result is true so that means that all of this is true or in other words that the password has worked on the lock then the combina combination lock would open this also works with the, with an end so let me give an example of something that uh, has to be true for an end operation to work as well. So let's say a very similar concept that we have a key lock where where we need two people to open it. So like maybe some nuclear missiles, you know, need to have two people to open the password. So let's say the two passwords are uh, are uh, one two three again because this is the most safe nook around, and the other password is two three four. Okay, let's. Okay, there we go. And now if you wanted to check if this is true, let's say the entered pass one is, let's say that one password was correct and let's say that the other password was incorrect and was something like this. Okay, now we will check it like we checked it before. If pass, password one, so our actual password is equal to our entered password and so we would use the keyword end here because what we want to check is that both passwords are actually correct. In, and if the password two is equal to our entered password two, then launch nook, right? Just, just as a very silly example. So in this case, what would happen is we would check this is our actual password, remember? So if our actual password one, two, three is the same as our entered password one, two, three, which in this case it is. So this means that this side is true. Then we would check the right side. If the password two that we entered is two three four, and if that is equal to our enter test or three four one, which is not, this then equates to false. And because they are not the same in this case, of course, in our situation, we don't want to lodge in the nook because the entered password is not correct. And of course, if you if you do it something like this, then the left side would equate to true because the password would match. The right side would equate to true because the password would match. And this whole expression would equate to true. And that would mean that uh, the both passwords are correct and then the nook would be launched. So now that we got a grasp of just some basic logical operations that we can do and how we can combine them, I want to actually explain if statements and how we can use them in our actual code. Okay, let's go to if statements now. What are if statements even? If statements are a way for us to check if certain parts of the code match or maybe are true or false and then executing some code accordingly. So let me just give you an example because it's easier than trying to explain. Let's just say that we have a variable called a that has a value of five. And let's say that we want to do something uh, when this variable is 10 for whatever reason. So we could write something like this. If a is equal to 10, then execute the following code, a is 10, let's say just as an example, and then we end it. So what does this do? The first of all, if is a keyword that is reserved in the Lua language for the if statement. And when you write it, what our code expects, then that there will be a condition. And if this condition is met, then we will do something which is indicated in this the, the, this space between the then and the end. So we can have multiple lines of code and this gets ex executed and then we would end it. So what in, in what would happen in this case? Because a is five, five is not equal to 10. In other words, this would be equated to false, which means that this would not get triggered and it would not execute. But of course, if we change our value to 10, this would get triggered and or executed so because 10 is equal to 10. In other words, this whole operation or or statement gets resulted as a true statement and that means that this is executed well that's all fine and dandy let's take a look at another example let's still we have the a as a 10 and now we want to check if our number is odd or even and how can we do that well a very popular or maybe the easiest way to check is with the modulo operator and if this is if this results in as i'll explain what it does so let's uh, let's just do it like this. Number is even, All right? And so what happens here? A modular operator, if you forgot, is a remainder of a division. So if you like divided five by two, this would result in two remainder one. And if you divided an even number, let's like say an eight with two, this would result in four and the remainder would be zero. So you can see how we can use the modulo here to determine if a number is even or if a number is odd. So if a number is odd, the remainder with division with two will be zero. And of course, if it's an 
No, I just said that wrong. If a number is even, the remainder of a division by two will be zero. And if a number is odd, then the remainder of a division by two will be one. So in this case, if you just kind of simulate how this is going to go through, okay, we're going to divide two by 10 by two. The result is five, the remainder is then zero. So this, the result of this would be zero. And zero is equal to zero, which means that this is a true statement, which means that this will get printed. So let's just test it to see if it works. Number is even, so that's great. And if you write something like a nine, which is an odd number, this would not get executed. So that works. But how would we output that a number is odd as well? Well, one possibility is to do something like this, right? Write another if statement. But there's actually a more elegant solution that we can use to kind of do that. What an if statement also has is an else clause, which means that if this condition is false, the else clause will be then executed instead of the of, of the regular uh, of the leg regular uh, like main block of the if code. So ju just to kind of summarize it, if this is true, this block of code will get executed. And if this is false or not true, then this code in the else will be executed. So if I just run it again, you can see that because the number is odd, because of course, let's simulate it. If nine divided by two is four and the remainder of that division is one, which means that this is not true because one is not equal to zero. So this is false. And because this is false, we go in the else clause and whatever is in the else gets executed. So in this case, number is odd. And of course, if you change this back to an even number like a four, we would get printed that the number is indeed even. So this is how we can use else clauses to kind of uh, simulate if uh, execute code if it's correct, so if it's something is true, and we can simulate something if something is false. But of course, we don't need the else clause, you know, so, but sometimes it comes in handy, and it's a tool that I think if you program mods or anything is becomes very useful very fast as you're gonna going through with it. Okay, so now that we learned about the else statement or the else clause, however you want to call it, I want to show you another example. So let's say that we have an A, which is an any number, and we want to see if this number is positive or if it's a negative or if it's exactly zero. So how could we do that? Of course, we could write three if statements and then check all these three things separately. But another thing we can do is nest ifs. And nesting ifs sounds a bit peculiar, but I'll show you what I mean. So let's say that if A is bigger than zero, just learn what, I just use whatever we learned so far, we will say A is positive. And of course, if you just write else here, uh, we can say that A is negative because, because of course, if it's smaller than zero, there's a possibility of it being actual zero, which means that it's not a negative number because it's a zero, right? So some of you might say, okay, well, we can write another if statement inside it. Of course, that is exactly what we're going to do. If A is equal to zero, then we're going to print out that print a is zero. And if it's not, then we're going to print out that it's a negative. And of course, we can't forget the end at the end of the if statement. And of course, if you run this, you can see that a is positive and this works. So how that, let's just go through with it to kind of simulate what this code is doing. If five is bigger than zero, this is true. So we just print out a is positive and ignore the else because like I said, if this statement is true, this gets executed. And if it's false, this gets executed after the else. Let's say that our number now is zero, exactly. And we see that a is zero, so that's great. So first of all, we go, is a bigger than zero? And of course it's not. So we go, this is false, and we go in the else clause. And now we check, is zero equal to zero? It is, so we print out a is zero. And now of course we have the negative number. We do it again, you can see that it works. But what happens is, if minus five bigger than zero, of course it isn't. We go in the else clause, is a equal to zero? Of course it's not. So we go in another else clause, print a is negative. So that's just one, one way of doing this. And you might li like this code structure because it's very apparent what it does. But what Lua allows you to do is put else if together, and then you only need one end at the end, one end at the end. So you don't need two ends. And this is just something that is possible in Lua. And of course, uh, you can use either either choice, whatever you think looks better. You know, some people prefer this because then you don't have to worry about the ends at the end. And some people might prefer the other option because it's, mo it's more structured. Of course, I'm just telling you this because I want you to know that you have options. 
so now that we kind of got discovered, I just want to show you a bit more intricacies and uh, some more tricks that I didn't have a chance to explain before. So this is the end of the first part. I didn't plan on this to end after 15 minutes because the actual video is 30 minutes long, but I figured because the, the video is so long that I don't want to show too much information at once and I would rather split them into two 15 minute segments. So this part is just the basics about the logical uh, statements and the if statements and then the next part will actually contain a few more advanced things about how we can interact, how we can read types and how we can recognize types when we are reading from the console and of course at the end there will be an example that will call, cover both parts equally. So with that said guys if you have any questions please I urge you to ask them and stay tuned for the second part and I hope to see you next time.